Well, hello there, YouTube. And on a wet, dreary day <laughs> in January, late January, today is the 22nd of January, 2017, we are going to install some heated grips on our 2017 Street Glide Special. These are the OEM grips that Harley Davidson sells. These are literally the grips that are on that come stock on like the uh, the more featured touring bikes like you know the ultra limiteds and whatnot. The uh, adjustment will be on the left hand grip. Everything looks stock. The only way you'll know that there's heated grips on this bike is the fact that it's got the six position heated grip knob on the left grip. If any of you guys have looked into the heated grips, you'll notice uh, if you look on Harley's website, it says that a jumper harness is required to install the heated grips. And they give you a part number. If you do a search under that part number, um, it tells you that, you know, under fitment, you know, of course it shows that this new kit is for the 17s only. There's different numbers for the other years, but under the instruct or the fitment, for the jumper wire kit, it tells you it's required for the heated grips. But if you look at the instructions for the heated grips and the instructions for the accessory jumper wire kit, neither one of them ever say anything about interlinking the grips to that jumper kit. The reason being, the bike is pre-wired for the heated grips. And I'll show you why here in just a sec. First thing we're going to do is pull the... The fairing off it's uh i already had this thing off i did a daily vlog about about the uh power outlets um yesterday so the fairing it's just being held on by this one bolt so there's three screws up top lift your shield out and then there's a screw here and a screw here i'll show you in a better right here and right here you pull them screws out two on each side and uh leave the center one in because as i'll show you this is holding the whole fairing on i didn't bolt this thing all back down because i was going to do this today so this is my hanger that's holding the whole thing down so leave that one in pull your fairing forward and you'll have depending on whether you have the day maker or not this is the regular headlight. You got a high and low beam couplers that you need to unplug. And then uh, safely put your fairing in a good place. Leave your hanger bolt handy because that helps you when you're installing, installing the fairing. And from the factory, this coupler right here is for the heated grips. You have three power outlets up here. You have an accessory outlet, which you can see I have the internal um powered antenna plugged into it and that's a keyed on hot this is a keyed on hot this is for fender tip lights and this is the uh heated grip um power coupler over here is the right heated grip wire now it doesn't have a heated grip on it but the um TGS or throttle grip sensor that controls the ride by wire um, is inside the handlebar with the adjustment knob or the potentiometer uh, connection at the end of the grip. So it slides in, has a little plastic, you'll see here in a minute, plastic knob and it kind of mates to the grip. So when you twist the throttle, it's twisting that potentiometer. But that potentiometer has the power wire for the heated grip and the plug-in for that is at the end of the potentiometer right now there's like a little dust seal or dust cap that's on that protecting those those uh, connectors so right grip is pre-wired you just have to plug the grip in the left side older versions of the heated grips you had the heated grip wire that you ran inside the bar and the power wire for the grips ran externally they've updated these and they're now both internal wires both the power wire and the other wire that uh plugs into the uh to the right hand grip so 
when I run the left grip, the power wire is going to go to the power connector and the grip wire is going to connect into the right grip. So you're connecting the left and right grips together and then you got a power wire that comes out. Pretty simple. All right. First step, we got to take this inner dash off. Well, there, this thing is, is slightly slotted, but with the tank here, this thing has to come back and up. And uh, I've, I haven't put the uh, cover over my tank. I should do that first, but I'll just show you something here right quick. So it's going to require having your key. Turn the handlebar in a lock position. Turn the ignition to the lock position. Put your key in. And on the left hand side of this, is if you stick your finger underneath there, you'll feel a little button you can push. So you put the key in, push that button up, turn about 60 degrees, and you'll release the ignition piece from it. But you leave yourself with a problem here. The steering is locked on the bike. Well, you don't need the steering locked while you're working on it. But while it's sitting in that position, this you'll see that the cutaway in this dash is smaller than this opening. So you take a 7 8, 8 wrench. And be careful, I'm doing this without a tank cover, so it's a big no-no. And uh, this thing is not very tight, but you loosen this nut here. Slip this off. Kind of keep your orientation straight. And now you'll see that this groove will slide right over that. So set all this aside. Now I'm going to show you something that's a big no-no. Because you're supposed to have a tool that has this shape on it. So you can reach in there and, t and turn the tumbler, tumbler over. What happens, that's the reason I have the flashlight out, is... If you look, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little white piece down there. Because two things are being turned. One is the steering lock, which is this position here. And you're turning the ignition switch with this. Well, if I stick a screwdriver in there, I can only turn one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly, I'm going to grab this top portion. Very carefully grab that and turn it until you hear it click. I gotta get it all here at the same time. So I'm gonna turn my ignition slightly. Get it all to turn. So they all line up. <laughs> I'm still in the lock position. There we are. Alright. Gotta be careful with that. Because everything has to be lined back up. Or when you put the fuse back in and and turn all this stuff back that ignition switch that has the contact in it all needs to turn at the same time so anyway now when i take these screws out i'll be able to manipulate that out of there but let me get a tank cover for this thing first so on each side of this inner dash is a 5 32nd screw with with a washer if you can see what i'm doing here have wires because these are can be switches with accessories well they just have the coupler plugged in so you need to un unplug these couplers and just reach in there very carefully unplug them you see the little release buttons here so you lift up very carefully not to scratch anything there's the two couplers that I just unplugged but anyway I gotta take the uh, and if you have the running lights on there that's gotta come off too but you take uh, you know, both um, turn signal brackets off and you release this lower chrome shield here and you rotate this thing almost in a vertical position. Okay, I've already taken the left side off, but I'll show you this side. You got these, the washers 
stick with the uh, with the nuts. So you slide this bracket out of the way. Pull your turn signal coupler. You got a little release tab right there. Squeeze, pull that out. And now these are uh, essentially double slide, uh, double sided studs. So you got a stud to hold the bracket on, and then it's also going through and holding holding these pieces on. All right. So here's your studs here. I've already pulled the the left side one off. And you pull this this lower cover off. And then you have the upper ones up here. And I'm just going to set this aside down here so it doesn't take off on me. And you'll notice that the fairing is just flop socky on here. Look at there. There's access to the hole in the handlebars right there. There she is. I know I can't show you, but the slot in the handlebar is sitting right there. There we are. So what I have to do now is pull the master cylinders off front, front and rear. I mean, uh, front and clutch. And you, the clutch side, I don't think is that way. But you got to be careful with the brake side because the brake light switch is actually in this housing. What could happen when you're putting the assembling this stuff? You could you could rupture or damage the. Uh, I don't know if you can see the little white brake light switch in there. But that used to be a little small nub, and when you're putting this together, you could with the brake lever you could snap that or damage it and you had to replace that switch it looks like there's a little ramp on it I could probably I could probably stick something heck even a piece of a zip tie or something I could stick something in there and hold that brake hold that brake lever open enough that it would uh it would clear clear that thing yeah, that might not be a bad idea so anyway, it's going to take a T25, T27 Torx, and we're going to knock the uh, the master cylinders out of the way here right quick. So I was walking over to my toolbox, an old uh, business card. I don't know if this will work, but if it does, you can be my witness. That might not even stay in there. That thing's kind of ramped. Oh, look at that. And it's it's the little protrusion on the grip that pushes that that switch is completely out of the way. So I have a T27 here. The T27 is for the uh, oh no yeah it's 27 on the master cylinders and it's 25 for the uh, for the switches. So I started loosening the master cylinder and I thought. I'm going to do myself a solid here. I like where the levers are. That's the way they came from the factory. Um, most likely there's not a detent to make this thing stay in one place. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's not. So I'm going to run this down the slot of this clamp. And I'm going to put myself a dot. A dot on the handlebar. You probably can't see that. I'm going to do that on each side here. Just run it down the slot. See, I left myself a little dot on the handlebar so I'll know where these levers were when I go back together. So you have the two T, T25s and they got little stoppers so the screw doesn't come all the way out which is kind of cool. And it looks like it's just a, a fascia that comes off of it and leaves the switch cluster behind. These are T27s like I say and a T25s for the, uh, for the switch. Set these aside. And that slides out. I hate setting these things upside down because they can gobble air. So initially I'm going to crisscross these things. See if I can break this grip loose. See, they do put glue in them. Alright. Is that thing open enough? Yep. So I need to make sure this is all nice and clean. I'll, I'll scrape some of that 
glue off of there. Then we're going to have the fun task of uh, getting the wires to go through. You know, one of the things you can do is uh, is run a uh, you know wire tape or a piece of wire like you know uh, safety wire or something like that. You can run it through, push it down, grab it, tie it to your wires, and pull it through. But we'll see how stiff these wires are on that grip. An old trick is you uh, you plumb these things in here. These may just slide down by themselves. No. Or maybe they will. But you take your air compressor and you blast air down there and blow the wires through. <laughs> you wouldn't think that would work, but I'm telling you right now, it will. See, I can't get my hand around the corner there. I can probably move that fairing a little farther forward. I think they're uh, force feeding themselves in there. All right, so the wires are the wires are at the hole. Okay, so what I ended up doing is I just took a zip tie and put it in the hole at the bottom and let the zip tie turn around the hole and just pulled the wires out. It'd been way a lot easier to have a a chaser in there to to do it. So we're gonna slide the grip. There's a little wire guide in that grip that has to go in the handlebar there's like a little star and the the wires are coming through it and it's sitting about right here and that kind of goes in the bar keeps the wires from probably chafing or something and that has to fit in that groove which there it is so i can tell where i need to be by temporarily setting this because we know I made that mark on the bar there's my mark that's gonna be right about in that groove and that switch cluster has to go in like so so you can see that the grip is engaged can't see this side but it's engaged into the into the housing here so when I tighten this high housing down it's gonna hold hold that grip in place and there's my there's my two wires there's my power wire that's going to that coupler right up front and here's my uh, the wire that's gonna plug in to this right grip that's already there so I just need to set the fairing and everything back where it was, stuff these, well, this wire needs to go to that side. This one needs to go to this side. In a way that I can find them again, maybe. Put everything back and uh, we'll do the right side, which won't require the fairing being off because it's, it's a plug and play on that side. And I, I'm literally a plug and play. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this back into position here. Being careful not not to hit my uh, my cowling against the uh, ignition switch there. Or not the cowling, but the bottom of the the boom audio thing there. Just want to be careful you don't snag anything there. First thing I need to do before I get too carried away, there's my power wire to my grips. It still has the has the dummy plug on it. So I literally can plug these things in right now. There we are. Power to the grips. And here is my this is the left grip. It's going to plug into the right grip. And for whatever reason, this one didn't have a dummy plug in it. It was just open. And it's nice and clean in there. So it's all in good shape. So we're going to plug in the left grip to the right grip. And I'll tuck those away neatly. So we have power to the grips. The grips are connected. So the power going into the left is also going to feed to the right. And, um, 
We just got the throttle side to do and we've installed a set of heated grips on a 2017 Street Glide Special. And this will apply, I don't know about previous years, but 14 through 17, this will all be exactly the same. All right, so I took a couple minutes and went ahead and put the fairing and stuff back on. It's just the few screws that hold it on. So all that's together. And I was about to bolt the shield down and I forgot, I got myself a little something something. Oh yeah, heck yeah. I don't know, the chrome on that thing just fits this bike. Everybody goes, how could you go for such a chromed out bike? Do you realize there's not any more chrome on this than on my black Street Glide Special, my 2015? The only additional piece of chrome on this bike from my other one is that that, that lower balance thing is, is chrome. That's it. Every piece of chrome is in the same place. So this is where you need to be a little careful with that, that front brake switch. But, see how it's got a cam on it? So they've, they've kind of designed it so that hopefully you don't, you don't break the thing now. So I'm going to try to do the same thing here and set this thing up top here. So it's not upside down and gobbling air. Because I'm, I'm not into a brake bleed today. So this should slide right off. And there's your uh, throttle sensor. That is, that is the sensor right there. Pretty cool, huh? But on the end here is a little cap. And uh, it's just basically a dust cover protecting the uh, plug-in for the heated grip. All right, the old trusty Stanley here. If I can not bang into the spider. Should be able, there it goes. See, it's a little O-ring. It's covering two little pins, if you can see that. That's even telling you this is the plus side over here. Well, how cool is this? Take your little Allen, and you got the little clips on there, just like the cap. And you gotta very carefully, I'm gonna figure out where I need the wires, though. Very carefully tuck that thing in there somehow or another and plug her in. All right, now she's clicked in. So I need to, the wire's neatly tucked the way that I can put the cap on. Verify that she's in and plugged, which it is. She's securely capped in. Look at that. Nice and neat. Alright, so all I need to do now is put my my switch housings back together. That's pretty cool with the little Allen thing there. You gotta get this thing to lock. <laughs> there we go. And make sure we clear the switch, which we are. Let's temporarily throw these in. There's my little black dot is still there, so I know where where home is. That worked out over there. And don't worry, even though it's a Sharpie, it will wipe right off a of chrome if you decide you don't like it on there. Or just over time, it'll disappear as well. Just want to make sure nothing's pinched in there. And you kind of move those wires around. You'll, you'll feel that it's in there. But you could very potentially pinch those wires with the master cylinder clamp. I can't stress this enough. You need to absolutely make sure that your throttle works smoothly. I've got a thing about my levers being even with each other. Just in case my dots aren't right. But you can't have the switch, if you have the switch go too far in, your uh, cap, or you know, if it's a solid grip like the stock one, can rub against the end of the bar and bind your throttle up. Make sure that nothing's binding. You can turn the steering wheel back and forth. If you got throttle cables, make sure when you turn the steering back and forth 
it doesn't take all the slack up out of the out of the throttle you don't want to be taken off down the road and realizing that you've uh, got something bound or your throttle pipe doesn't return things will get real ugly real fast there we are there's a set of heated grips here we are oh yeah I'm feeling some warmth and the the right ones always gonna get warmer first because you got a plastic pipe riding on the bar and this one has got direct contact with the bar I get that more than anybody I that my right grip my left grip is not as warm as my right just hang on just gotta keep going it will get there the only difference is this is just heating up a piece of plastic this one even though it is plastic underneath there is in direct contact with the handlebar so you gotta to a certain extent heat the handlebar up as well they're definitely getting warm i got it on six now good thing i got a battery charger standing by because it's going to take some take some recharging <laughs> yay they work i've got heated grips on my street glide how about that? How about that? There you are. Easy peasy. Put a set of heated grips on your Street Glide or Street Glide Special. I can only confirm that 14 through 17 is that way, but the bike is pre-wired and ready for you to install these grips. I would imagine a shop, you know, because... It's different when you're working on somebody else's bike. It's like way more care in, in doing it. I would imagine a shop would probably charge around three hours. That would that would be a legit three-hour job, I would say. That's, that's just me guessing. I have no idea. I don't have access to Harley's flat rate. So. But I, I would say probably three hours. If you want your bike back, no scratches. <laughs> but there they are. God, they're still still retaining that heat that feels great all right so that's going to be it there's a, a quick install of harley davidson heated grips i appreciate you guys watching you guys have a wonderful wonderful day take care now we'll see you